Ciao y'all, Natalie Kenya here and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to take you on a tour of Rome, not a physical tour, but basically a visual tour of the coolest neighborhoods in Rome or the neighborhoods in Rome that I find to be interesting to live in. If you're new here, my name is Kenya. Yes, like the country. And I'm an American girl documenting my experiences while living abroad in Rome, Italy. From food to travel to sharing some of my life abroad tips with you, this is what you will find on my channel. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload. Moving on. Let's talk cool neighborhoods in Rome, Italy. This video goes a bit hand in hand with my previous looking for an apartment in Rome video. So if you haven't already, make sure to check that out and I will link it below in the description box for you guys and also link it here. So make sure you head over there after you watch this video. Let's just be clear, Rome is a large and sprawling city, okay? There are different Italian administrative districts and those are called rioni. So let's start the tour. I wanted to start with the 13th rione in Rome and that is Trastevere. Trastevere literally means on the other side of the Tiber River. It has a live local atmosphere. It's a bit bohemian and for me personally it is a little bit too touristic for my taste. It is beautiful though so wait just follow along with me here. It is across the Tiber River from the historical center and it's filled with a variety of restaurants and bars. You can find traditional trattorias and pizzerias here along with Michelin starred restaurants as well. By night it can be a bit crazy so I do suggest that if you do want to stay in Trastevere you have more of a party vibe or just like you're the cocktail scene kind of person. There is no metro here so it is best to walk from the Centro Storico. Speaking of the Centro Storico let's move on to that and it is a group of mini rioni and it is actually classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1980. It has a variety of different marketplaces for shopping. You can socialize over a bit of food and drink with your friends. Basically it's everything you need in your life and more. Many of the major and most important attractions are located in this rione like the Trevi Fountain, the Spanish Steps, the Pantheon. These are all hot ticket items that you will find in this area. Not only is it filled with cobblestone streets, but this is where the atmosphere of Rome is truly felt. It isn't a very cheap place to stay, but it is very comfortable and very Italian. It is full of tourists though, and I don't really recommend it if you do want to get around by car. A Vespa or a scooter, yes. A car, no. If you have not yet made your way to Rome, I definitely suggest that you stay in the Centro Storico during your first trip to Rome. Living though, it can be a bit expensive and not that comfortable if you do want to drive around or park your car. It's also not that convenient to me personally if you do want to take public transportation like the metro. You do have connections, but they're a bit outside of the historical center. So let's talk about the second rione located in the Centro Storico and that is Trevi. Yes, like the Trevi Fountain. It is touristic but still elegant it is home to of course the Trevi Fountain like the name suggests and also nearby are the Spanish Steps. It is very busy during the day and decently quiet at night. It is home to Palazzo del Quirinale. The only downside to this is that there is no metro in this area but if you just want to walk around and you know get your exercise in it's perfect. Moving on to the first Rione in Rome and that is Monti and it borders the Colosseum and Basilica Santa Maria Maggiore. It is a very charming area of Rome. I actually recommend this area as well if it is your first time visiting Rome. The main square Piazza Madonna dei Monti is a hot spot when people want to start their night off right with an aperitivo. You just pop open a bottle of wine in the local square, share a few drinks and laughs with your friends. It's really great and I cannot wait for it to reopen after this pandemic has concluded. There are cobblestone streets, ivy on the building for that extra element of charm, and great small boutiques and wine bars. Also it has a major street running through the area and that is Via Nazionale. Here you can find a metro stop as well. Cavour is actually part of the blue line or line B. Moving on to Prati, the 22nd Rione of Rome, and Vatican City which isn't a part of Rome or Italy. But it does border Prati, so I wanted to mention it in this section as well. Of course, you haven't been to Rome unless you've seen Castel Sant'Angelo, uh, St. Peter's Basilica, or the Vatican Museums. It is a more traditional part of the city, but it is exclusive and upscale. It is a quieter, more residential area of Rome with good restaurants, wine bars, 
cocktail lounges and still very well connected to the city. It is a very safe area as well with a main street called Via Cola di Rienza. Here you can find the Metro, the Red Line or Line A with stops Ottaviano and Lepanto. Moving on to Testaccio, the 20th Rione of Rome. It's located across from Trastevere and has that very Roman feel. Restaurants are deeply rooted in the Cucina Romana or the traditional Roman cuisine. This area is actually built around Monte dei Cocci, which means Broken Pot Mountain, and it is a waste artificial mound built from old, broken, ancient Roman pottery from the time of the Roman Empire. Pretty interesting stuff, huh? <laughs> there are also discoteque and bars in this area as well and it's home to the modern art museum and architectural school called Matatoya which used to be an old slaughterhouse yeah that's for a turn of events <laughs> it does have the metro running through this area as well as the regional train lines and that is going to be the blue line line b with stop piramide there are many areas outside of the centro storico that i thought would be great to mention as well in this video so let's move on to municipality five called pigneto pigneto is an urban area and it's very trendy and transforms from cafe sipping on the terrace to open air bars and electronic music at night it's like the brooklyn of rome with hip Hipsters and markets and it's really not touristic at all. This is the area where you can find all the Romans with tattoos. <laughs> there are very traditional pizzerias and trattorias here with really chill happy hour slash aperitivo bars and gelaterias. It's more economical and still pretty close to the historic center. The pedestrian area of Via del Pino can be seen as the nightlife strip. Here you can actually find a metro line as well, new and improved. It's the green line or line C with stops Pigneto and Malatesta. So let's move on to the 10th quarter of Rome called Ostiense, and I'm going to group Garbatella in this area as well. It is close to the left bank of the Tiber River near Via Ostiense and the home of Italy. That is definitely a wonderful grocery shopping experience. It's definitely residential and home to Rome's street art scene with work from many world-renowned Roman graffiti artists. It's eclectic, vibrant, and actually home to Gasometro, which is the city's old gas structure. Here you can actually find a metro line as well, and that is the blue line or line B called Piramide. So let's talk Garbatella in Municipio Otto. Eight. It is a nice neighborhood full of some of the most interesting architecture in Rome and a lot of young creative Romans. It's a charming, eclectic, and very traditional area of Rome with many yummy, yummy trattorias. There's actually line B or the blue line here with stop Garbatella. Let's move on to the 15th Rione and that is called Esquilino. It's actually named after Esquiline Hill, which is one of the seven hills of Rome. It's south of Termini and probably home to the most diversity in Rome as well. This area contains many immigrants from all over the world, especially Asia and North Africa. It's a bit run down, but you do have a lot of international and multicultural dining options here, especially if you want an Italian food break and even food markets are located in this area as well. If you want some diversity, you definitely come to this Rione. It is home to one of the major basilicas in Rome as well, and that is Santa Maria Maggiore. Here you have the metro line that is red or line A with the stop Vittorio Emanuele. Let's move on to the Jewish quarter or Jewish ghetto, which is actually in the 11 Rione of Rome called Sant'Angelo. This area is full of traditional restaurants, including places to try Roman Jewish cuisine. It's centrally located with many boutique stores and can contains a large part of the Jewish history in Rome. I think this area is so beautiful and vibrant with a medieval feel. Moving on to Parioli and Trieste. These are the second and 17th quarters of Rome, respectively. It is one of the wealthier neighborhoods in Rome. It's very quiet and very residential. Home to Villa Borghese Park, trendy restaurants, bars, and nightlife. So let's talk San Lorenzo. This is an urban area with bohemian vibes and can be a bit grungy at times. The nightlife is full of students and it's close to the largest university in Rome, Sapienza. It's filled with young artists and bookshops. It's part of the young Roman scene. The closest metro to this area is actually Termini with all of the lines intersecting particularly A and B. Now let's go a bit south to Eur. Yes, E-U-R, which is so difficult to pronounce if you're not Italian. It's a part of Southern Rome and filled with fascist architecture from 
the times, guys. I mean, Rome is an old city. You have to have that. You will likely stay in this area if you work for any international company. And this area is located closer to Ostia, which is where you usually go if you want to start your journey to the sea. I recommend this area for families or employees that have a job in the area. The area can be a bit boring, in my opinion, for nightlife, but that's just my opinion. Well, that's all for this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao, y'all.